Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to another video. And today I'm going to be sharing with you the camera gear, the electronics and everything like that I'm going to be taking with me on my month long adventure across Europe. I'm super excited to both go on this adventure and also share with you the gear I'm going to be taking with me. So I've done a lot of research to make this as efficient as humanly possible. So the goal here was to stay as light and as versatile as possible so I can get the shot whenever I need without it being too heavy and cumbersome. One quick thing to note is that all the camera gear, all the electronics you're going to be seeing today will be linked down in the description below. So if you're interested in picking any of these up, go ahead down there, support the channel by clicking on those links. Thanks. One of the most important things whenever you go traveling, whether you shoot video or photo, is the bag you carry it in. And after doing a lot of research, I think I settled on the Peak Design Everyday Bag. This is the 30 liter version, so it's a slightly larger one in charcoal gray. And it has some pretty amazing features you guys are going to see here. Um, it's a side access bag, so I really like that when you know you want to sling it over to your side and take some gear out without having to set it down on the dirty ground or you know set your bag down and have someone take it from you. That would have to be a very good day. But if you go around here, you can see we have the side access. But over here is where I'm going to be showing with you here. Um, so what you do is you go ahead and unzip it. Really sturdy zippers, I always appreciate that. In here, you're going to see a very large open area. That is where my camera goes. And it's very large, specifically in this shape, because I carry the microphone on top. I do not like putting the microphone on and off all the time because it's really a pain in the ass when you're trying to get a shot and trying to put the microphone on and everything. When something happens, I want to be able to shoot it. And in here, I have the Sony a6300 with the Sony 10 to 18 f4 lens. It is a great combo for vlogging because it's nice and wide, super sharp lens, and also when you're holding it handheld, it's not gonna be all shaky because it's a little bit more wide. On top of that, I have the Rode Stereo Video Mic Pro. I think stereo is so, so underrated when it comes to travel videos because everyone goes the mono route, like the normal Rode Video Mic Pro, but I think the stereo is so much more immersive for the audience because if you hear birds chirping over here, people talking over here, you're in the city space, having things going, around every, going on everywhere, you're gonna hear sounds from certain locations. No, it's not surround sound, but stereo makes for a much better experience. And the reason why that's not in here right now is because I'm actually using this camera to shoot the video right now, but yes, it will be going with me. Right underneath here, you can see I have the Manfrotto Pixie Evo, I believe. It's a little mini tripod. The legs extend. It's super nice because that way you're able to get a further distance. And on top, you can see here, I have the Manfrotto quick release plate. I put that on my camera, on my mini tripod, and on my gimbal you're going to be seeing here pretty soon because it's a very efficient way to be able to switch my camera from handheld to my gimbal shots without having to deal with anything, but I'll show you that in just a second. And also on top of that, the reason why I go with this over the typical gorilla pod that almost seems like every vlogger uses is because the legs don't wear out. Those gorilla pods, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna put my $1,200 camera on one of those because the issue is they wear out, they get flimsy. I mean, everyone has seen the Casey Neistat vlog. He's gone through a lot of broken cameras and I know I don't have the uh, money that he does quite yet. <laughs> Um, also in here you can see I have a lens pouch, although I am going to be shooting most of the time on my Sony 10-18 to f4, I'm also going to be shooting on the kit lens, this is the 16-50, to just in case I want to get a little bit more kind of telephoto shots, if I want to shoot some photos and stuff like that when I'm with me. I was kind of deciding whether or not to take it, but honestly I figured why not, I mean, cause look how tiny this thing is, figured, you know, might as well. Um, oh yeah, and also on the bottom here we have one of these little lens cleaner things because you never want to try to blow on the lens with your mouth because you can get spit on your lens and that's not going to be for a very good trip because <laughs> when your sensor is dirty that really messes things up. Here you can just hold your camera upside down and blow into it in case you get dust in there and it will get it all nice and clean. I know shooting at f4 you can kind of occasionally see some spots if your lens or if your sensor is dirty so that's why this thing comes in super handy. Also you can see here how those legs go and collapse down. It makes it for a very quick and efficient setup regarding that. If you open up this zipper here, you can see 
there is actually some little space in here for smaller stuff. And in here, I have three Sony batteries for my A6300. They fit perfect in here. So that means I can take three here and one in the camera. So I have four batteries that will easily last me a full day. And here you can see another mini tripod. That's for the gimbal I'm gonna show you in just a moment. And also we have a little kind of like hard case waterproof thing for the SD cards. Keeps your footage nice and secure. It's just, it's one of those things to have your SD cards really organized. It's nice because you don't have to worry about them breaking or losing them. They're all in one place. And last up in this little compartment, we have the red Sidewinder. This thing is really nice. It's a multi-tool kit that has every piece of little tool you could possibly use for a filmmaker. It has a flathead, it has Allen wrenches, it has, you know, Phillips head. All those little things where if something needs to be tightened or if something broke and you need to fix it, whatever it is, having a tool like this on you while you're out and about is going to be super useful because if you have a piece of gear that you could use but you can't because something needs to be tightened, that comes in really handy. But we're going to be putting this away in just a second. But one cool thing about this bag I want to show you guys is how these dividers can just fold. So regardless of whatever your camera size is or if you want to adapt, you can do that. In here, you can see I have a little pouch. I love these little pouches because it's just really nice to be able to take whatever you want with you, just all in little contained packages. Here you can see we have some GoPro mounts for the GoPro Hero 5. And this was also kind of like that lens. I was questioning whether or not to take it with me, but here's the thing. This is a waterproof camera. I don't have any other waterproof cameras. If you want to go to the beach and jump in the water and get the shot, it's really nice for something like that if you want to go cliff jumping. There's a lot of things that the GoPro can capture that a lot of cameras can't, but I do see a lot of people overusing these things. I think the GoPros are more meant for a specialty shot rather than, you know, your main camera. That, that's just my opinion there. Everyone has their own opinion, but I think GoPros are super nice just to have with you when, you know, your typical camera couldn't get a shot like that. And especially when you can contain it in a very small package like this. I have three batteries in here with the charger and even the cable. You can just tuck it away and then fold this up like so. And look at that. How awesome is that? So we're going to go ahead and zip this up and flip it around to the other side to reveal the gimbal. This is the Zion Crane 2. And how awesome is it that I can fit an entire gimbal in my bag? Look at that, isn't that so cool? Here you can see, you can put on the little uh, tripod legs. That's so you can balance it wherever you're out and about if you need to. But here's the thing. A lot of times I people see people, you know, not using these quick release plates on top of the gimbal. And I don't know why. I heard this from Craig Adams actually, about this quick release system for Manfrotto. I'm sure you can get cheaper versions like that. But the main point of this is so that way, when you have the quick release plate on your camera, you can switch it from the gimbal to your handheld you know, mini tripod thing without having to balance the gimbal or mess with screws or anything like that. All I have to do is take my camera, snap it right onto the gimbal. So efficient, and like I said, I got this idea from Craig Adams. I'll be sure to link his channel in the description below, but the efficiency of not having to deal with rebalancing your gimbal every single time makes your life so much easier. And also on top of that, the battery life in this gimbal is so crazy. So for travel, I'm barely going to have to charge this thing. So this goes in like so. Just tuck it in and away. Put this up. Zip it and we're good. And the cool thing about this bag is you can actually lock the zipper or the uh, the zippers. They have this little feature where you can go like this, wrap it around and tie it down. This I do on only one side actually. So that way I'm not opening up the gimbal side if I forget which side is which. I automatically know when I go to try to unzip it, oh, this one's locked. That's the gimbal side. So we're gonna go ahead and put this little mini tripod back away and put it in there like so. But we are not quite done with this bag. There is still more stuff in here. Now, one of the more noteworthy features of this bag is the really cool clasp it has right here. Now, to open this up, the magnetic little latch, you pull out and down. So that way no one's gonna be really getting, getting into your bag and everything. And you can see we have four different settings. 
These are all, so that way you can expand your bag out like so. If you have more stuff you wanna throw in your bag, you can easily do that. But in here, all I have is a selfie stick, like a monopod thing for the GoPro Hero 5. So that way I'll have something to attach it to if I don't want to go and use it handheld, which is not really recommended. It's super sturdy. You can use this thing as a baton if you want to, man. <laughs> Self-defense, but <laughs> no. The uh, It's really nice how you can uh, just collapse it down and really just kind of put it anywhere in your bag. And uh, last up in here, I want to show you these headphones. And these are the Sony WH-X1000X Mark II, or it's some stupid name. They come in this really cool travel case, nice and padded, so your headphones are going to stay looking new and clean. These things are phenomenal. And I'm going to tell you why. Number one, they have excellent noise canceling. So when you're on the airplane, you want to watch a movie or listen to music, you're not going to be hearing that droning noise. You're going to be able to sleep or focus on whatever it is you're working on. The second thing is you can plug in these headphones even if they're not charged because yes, they're Bluetooth and they're wireless, but you can also plug in this cable right here into your laptop. Let's say your headphones are dead and you still need to get that vlog uploaded and edited, you can still go ahead and do that. So I really like how these things come in a nice little travel case, super small, super slim. One headphones, one pair will do it all. But just when you thought there possibly couldn't be any more fit in this bag, you are wrong. Up top here, you can see next to the saddle brown handle, we have a big long zipper. And when that does is reveal a quick access compartment for things like, for instance, my sunglasses. These are the Ray-Ban Club Masters. Love these things. Super clean. Also, we have a couple other things in here. This is the Anchor portable battery. This is the 20,000 milliamp hour battery, I believe. Charges up your device so many times, I can't even believe, because when you're out and about, it's super nice to keep your smartphone charged if you want to take photos or stay connected, whatever it is. Also here we have the Anchor uh, USB-C charger for my Pixel 2 XL. So this is really nice how it comes with this little mesh kind of sleeve thing. You can keep your cable and everything in there like so. And also down in here, we have a 15 inch laptop compartment. This is the Dell XPS 15, my powerhouse, my mobile workstation, so I can edit all of my 4K vlogs. Also, shout out to James Matthews for the Create sticker. He's a really cool channel. I will also link that down in the description below. He does some amazing travel videos, but he also has a brand called Create. Really cool merchandise there. Now let's go ahead and put this all away. And the crazy thing is, is this thing still has space for a tablet. There's even a little tablet sleeve in there. I just think it's insane what you can fit in this bag. And it still looks relatively slim. But one last cool feature that I want to show you is actually in this top area. You can see that there is a hidden little compartment and it's a magnet too. So if you pull this down, this is where I'm going to be keeping my wallet. I like to use these nice slim wallets because that way they're not huge and cumbersome if they are in your pocket and my passport. Why I really like keeping it in this little compartment is so that way if you're unfortunate enough to have someone come and try to take your things, hopefully if they don't take your whole bag and they just try to steal your camera, you can at least have your passport and wallet on you or you know if you're staying in a hostel and someone tries to look through your bag. It should not find this little hidden compartment in here with your more important valuables. I think that is super interesting that all of this is in here. Now, these were just some of the insane features. I didn't even show you a fraction of what this bag can do. So if you guys wanna see a full review video and showing off everything this can do, let me know in the comments section down below because I'd be really happy to share with you what I believe to be the best travel camera bag, period. Now that we have this bag all packed up again, you can see that it's actually a pretty lightweight system. It's very portable. You can even get a waist strap that pulls right out of here. They just come out of these pockets and you clamp it down. Here you can see we have the upper support here. So that way you can get all the weight off your back. But generally, this bag is really lightweight. Like I would have no problem carrying this thing with me all day wherever I go. Now you're probably wondering, you know, you have the camera gear and all that stuff, but 
how are you going to be charging all this stuff? You left out the chargers and all that extra fluff. You know, you have the cool stuff here. Where's that all going to go? That is where we have the luggage. And then here, you can see we have the Douchebags Aviator. Yes, I said douchebags. The company is actually called Douchebags. It was founded by a person called Yoon Olsen. He has an amazing travel vlog also out there, but he designs these bags and since he travels the world all the time, he kind of knows what he's doing. In here, you can see we have some nice sturdy zippers, just like on the Peak Design bag. I always appreciate that. We have it opening up like so. Now in here, that is where you typically have your clothes and of course I'm not packed up for that, right? You gotta pack your camera gear first and then you can pack your clothes. You gotta be sure you have the storage for your camera gear. Clothes always come second, am I right? <laughs> but over here, most people would call this the underwear, the uh, toiletries, the socks compartment. I call it my charging area. <laughs> so if you reveal this in here, you can see I have some little different stuff kind of arranged in here. Here is one of those kind of travel power adapter things. You pull this off, there's for the EU. That way I'll be able to charge in Europe wherever I go. We have USB-C and three typical USB ports. But if you plug this back in here, you can also charge anywhere around the world. You can see it adapts like that. Um, from there, what I do is I grab this guy right here. This is really cool. Pretty clever, if you ask me. <laughs> we have two outlets up here, an on and off switch, and four USB type A quick charge ports. So I can keep all of my devices nice and powered up. So what I do is I pretty much, I grab this US port, US power plug right here, plug it into this guy right here and then I can plug that into the wall so I can keep all my devices nice and charged. And here you can see things like my watch charger. This is for my Huawei Watch 2. I plug that straight into the little power adapter. Here we have a power plug. This is for the, actually the charger you're gonna be seeing here in just a second. We have a USB-C to ethernet and USB-A. That's for my laptop, micro USB chargers. This thing is cool. This is a RAV power charger for my Sony A6300. Super slim, works on micro USB. That way I can charge it up with, again, the little travel power adapter thing here. Um, this is really cool. So I have four batteries. I put two in here. Then once those are charged, I put the other two and I'm fully charged up. But this is definitely travel friendly. And here you can see I have a one terabyte Western Digital hard drive. This thing is where I put all of my footage. That way I can keep it on a nice and secure platform. Um, and here you can see I have my laptop charger, the little adapter here. And also we can reveal the charger here for, you're gonna see in just a second. <laughs> here I have the Crane 2 charger, they're the little uh, batteries you put in here like that. Probably won't need to be using that thing that much because like I said, the crane battery does last a very long time. But the moment we've been waiting for, and here you can see that I will be taking with me the Mavic Pro. And this thing, whoop, <laughs> looks like the little gimbal guard fell off, but this thing is phenomenal. The way it can fold down is just insane if you ask me, but look at that. You have an entire drone that folds out like this. Look at that, guys. That is so awesome, how it can just fold down to completely nothing. So you just grab these legs here, and it folds up. So definitely super travel friendly, and there's gonna be amazing things we're gonna be seeing once we go to the uh, Europe here. So I definitely wanna be able to have a drone with me. And here you can see the remote control. That's in this little nice protective padded case. We're gonna put this in here. And the drone goes back in the padded foam case. Zip that up. Now I will be taking two batteries for this drone. I have one here, one on the drone. And of course I have the Polar Pro filters. These are the NDs. You have to have these if you're shooting with the Mavic Pro or really any drone for that matter. What these do is they're able to stop down your light and you can use much more cinematic lighting, but these pretty much just slide on right to the front of your Mavic Pro 
camera and you are able to get whatever settings you'd like and if it's super bright outside these bring out the colors so much better I highly highly recommend if not I'm gonna tell you you need these if you want to get good footage out of your Mavic Pro or whatever drone it is you use but overall guys you can see here that I'm only gonna be using a backpack and a suitcase and this suitcase is actually relatively small it's gonna be just enough to pack you know about a week and a half to a week worth of clothing so I'm um, yes I'm definitely gonna be washing my clothes with me as I go through the trip but just having a bag and a suitcase is gonna be so nice it's gonna be super lightweight and the insane thing is I'm gonna be having an a6300 stereo audio a gimbal and a drone with me and I'll also be able to edit that footage with me while I'm out and about so the entire goal here as you can see was to keep it nice and lightweight we use pretty lightweight stuff pretty much the bare minimum possible to accomplish what I want to do while still being able to shoot some pretty awesome stuff it's gonna be really easy to travel to and from we're gonna be doing bus plane carry-on whatever it is it's all gonna be in a nice small package. So if you guys have any questions, please be sure to let me know in the comments section down below. I try to be as thorough as humanly possible, but like I said, if there's anything else you wanna know, any other questions of what you recommend, all the gear that I mentioned today will be down there in the description below. Try to go through kind of just showing how I'm going to be using it. The gimbal's going to be getting, you know, nice smooth shots walking through wide open areas. I'm just super pumped, guys, to be making these travel videos. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see after this trip what I really needed and what I really didn't. I think I've thought about this a long time regarding what gear I'm going to be taking. And I think I'm going to be using pretty much all of it. But... If you guys want to, let me know what gear you guys use for your travel videos or your YouTube videos down in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, like it. And also, don't forget to subscribe. And I will see all you guys in the next video. Peace!